All right, so tell me your experience in the Spider-Man costume at Sheets. Well, first off, I'm going to correct you there. It's cosplay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I can explain the difference. How could I? <laughs> I don't know. But cosplay is very... Please tell me the difference. It's very different, the ending of the word. <laughs> right. Costume um, play. No, rather it's than too much. Costume. Cosplay, yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> I'm a bit of a cosplayer. I've been on the scene. I think I first kind of launched, one could say, uh -huh. GalaxyCon Raleigh last year. You you launched <laughs> GalaxyCon Raleigh? Yeah, that's where I launched my career as a cosplayer. Oh, great. Now, we don't wear costumes. We wear cosplays. So anyway, uh -huh. uh, obviously we just did the uh, Spider-Man live show. Yes. Uh, I had two cosplays, if you will. Right. One, I was Peter from Spider-Man 3, probably... The, one of the most like important scenes of that film. The dance. Yes. Yeah. The the movement. Uh huh. Uh, and, I uh, but I switched into what is it a leotard or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Like, like spandex. A, spandex. Yeah. Spandex. My spandex Spider-Man suit, of course, uh, gonna be Toby's version of of the um, of the suit. Yeah. I don't see. I don't believe that there are any other movies out there. You refuse to acknowledge. Acknowledge, yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we what we finished the show up at like 11, so I was starving, so sheets it was. Yeah. Um, and I had pretty much the perfect audience. I mean, it was filled with high school boys, mm. and I don't know if you know High Point University? Uh -huh. I don't know if you knew this track meet. They must have had a track meet recently somewhere in yeah. this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So an entire bus <laughs> of High Point University track stars were watching me eat my sheets fried appetizer with a plastic fork because, I mean, the Spider-Man suit is full. The hands. Right. The hands are covered. Yeah. I didn't want to get grease on my fingertips. <laughs> right. And also, you know, Spider-Man, like, I didn't want to get stuck, uh -huh. perhaps, mm -hmm. because of the the little fiber hairs. <laughs> yes. I assume if the costume, it said it was movie accurate, right. I assume that it would have, have kind of the sticky. similar stickiness. Right, right. So, um, but it was good. It was good. Um, I think it knocked me down a few pegs. Probably good for me, honestly. <laughs> um, felt like I was back in middle school. I do think it's fun. I, I I love that. Yeah, it's cool. I definitely times. think that it is a like a, a law that anytime you're in cosplay, it's always the worst time in public. Like you're like, oh, 11 p.m. No one's gonna be there. Right. Maybe one or two people. We're gonna whip in a uh, whole track team off of a bus, just filing in. Bunch I, they of might have been schoolers. laughing with me. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't ask. I was just kind of like, you know, I'm gonna, I was listening to. This, Spider-Man 2 soundtrack, oh, my AirPods, yeah. so I was, you know, I was feeling myself. Yeah. I was listening to some Switchfoot, Oof, is what. Love it. I love it. You know, we were meant to live for so much more, and that's what I was kind of thinking about <laughs> as I was enjoying the food. Um, I'm surprised you knew that rule about cosplay, because you're not as... Because I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not as... Compared to... <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. And no I, one you, can compare to you. You've dabbled. Fiona. I've dabbled. Uh, I've you've got a couple, a couple little. suits. Obviously didn't know the difference between cosplay and costume. Yeah, that's like a... Like, I mean, costumes, that's Halloween. <laughs> cosplay. Right. No one ever says cosplay Other costume. Days. Nobody does that. No. Uh, but I'm glad we could... Obviously, this podcast is about primarily about cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> I think. No. No. Okay. No. No. Okay. So, well, what is, so we're doing this podcast. Who are you even? Who am I? Uh, who am I? Who oh, are I we? Who are we? Who are we? So, I ask myself that a lot. We are dedicating a, this podcast to uh, comics, pop culture, mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of different stuff, promoting new books. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we are with Ultimate Comics. Yes, this is the Ultimate Comics podcast, uh, but not the Ultimate episode. It's actually the first episode. Uh huh. Uh, so uh, this is our first episode. So, who are you? My name is Brittany McNeil, and I am the event coordinator for Ultimate Comics Convention in C mm -hmm. Comic Con. Uh, it is every November in downtown Durham, North Carolina. 
Uh, so basically, I am the organizer. I make sure everything is uh, planned accordingly, mm -hmm. organized accordingly. I answer a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. I call myself a professional scribe because I am just attending meetings where Alan, the owner, is um, and my boss and he and I'm just like writing everything he says. I'm just furiously scribbling every mm -hmm. all of his thoughts because mm -hmm. there's no way he's going to remember. And you're going to actually execute them. Right. 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 He will he will wave his hand at me and I will make things happen. So <laughs> I mean, well, you did a great job though. This past year it was a great show. Thank you. One of my favorite NC Comic Cons I've ever been to primarily because I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> It was awesome. It's it was incredible. Breath of fresh air for you. It was so good. It Speaking was so of, good. tell uh, us who you are. Hey guys, I am uh, Sienna Fallon. I am the COO and managing partner of Ultimate Comics. We're, we're the biggest chain of comic shops in North Carolina. Uh, probably the best Carolina. Uh, and yeah, we have five stores across the state. And I help run the ship. Yeah. And uh, we also host... We both host mm -hmm. uh, the Ultimate Comics Live show every Tuesday night, which is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, different vibe. Different vibe. We're, we're standing. We're st <laughs> the most important difference I mean, is we're standing, uh, but also unhinged energy in the live yes, show. Yes, this is very professional. Yeah. I will not be... I mean, someone alleged that I s would talk about coke snorting on this podcast. I am... Refuse to bring refuse that up. Refuse to do that because that's not not on camera. Um, <laughs> but in both cases, you're hanging out with us. But yeah. I think the difference is here. It is in a more chill vibe where chill. we are going to talk about you know educational things uh, as well as um, what uh, what our recommendations are for well, things that are our favorites. We're kind of like the Bill Nye of comics. Yeah. Like you know, I like it. One half. Well, actually, I met Bill Nye. He's kind of weird. Well, um, I don't think you can do that much science without being a little bit a little, weird. A little weird. Yeah. yeah. So we're like like a cool, like a cool Bill Nye. Like, but for comic books. Right, 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 right. You know. Like a, Maybe a LeVar Burton. Yeah. That'd be a little better. Yeah, I was going to say like Neil deGrasse Tyson. <sighs> don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a just, strong stance. Just stop talking about movies, man. Just stop it. Um, <laughs> anyway, um... Uh, so, so yeah, we'll, 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 so we're, we're doing the podcast. Yeah. Um, and we talked a little bit, but, like, I feel like, you know, why are we doing this podcast? Because we've been asked, Ultimate has been asked for a long time to do a podcast. Uh, and I'm not just, like, blowing smoke. Like, a lot of the live show viewers, a lot of folks have asked us to do it. Mm -hmm. And I've always just been like, ugh. Oh, everybody who likes comics thinks they should have a podcast. Right. What right, makes right. us different? Like, why should we have one? Uh, and, you know, I think, you know, part of it is, like, there's just so many books out right now. Like, mm -hmm. there's so many comics. Even as a comic book retailer, it is hard, near impossible for me to keep up with everything. Yeah. I can't. Like, it's just, there's just too much. I, and I'm doing the ordering for five stores, so God, I wish I knew every every book. I wish I had, like, an elevator pitch. I wish I knew what was happening. But there's just not enough time in the day. Yeah. Um, because there's just so many books coming out. So so it's just like, where do you start, you know? Like, right. uh, I mean, what do you think? You're, you're a reader, right? Yeah. yeah so. so I am, I, I like to call myself an enjoyer. I'm not a, I, I'm not a master of any sort of topic in particular. I enjoy video games, I enjoy comics, I enjoy, you know, anime, cartoons, TV, all of the above. Um, I enjoy it. I'm not going to know everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you start bringing up creators or industry, you know, terminology, I'm probably going to be like, sure, yeah, whatever. Like, I will be making up half of what I say, and just I, to kind of test that out. And I might believe you. Um, there's a good chance I'll believe you. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, if it sounds right. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, like I, you know, obviously I don't know in in and out of everything. Um, I I'm sort of the general public. What they what they see when they scratch the surface. When a person comes into a comic book shop having not really read a whole lot of comics in the past. Yeah. Um, and they see the selection. <laughs> and right. You, you know, like Ultimate Comics carry. Uh, they have a carry location in North Carolina. It's huge. It's an amazing store. So many options. 
And then they tell you, like, what you're seeing right here, we still have a back room. It's got all these old comics in it. Right. And you go in the back room and you're like, oh, no. Right. Like, oh, oh right. uh-oh. <laughs> There's so many options here. So I guess for, for me to sort of counter you, mm -hmm. how do you handle a person like me who would walk in and say, hey, I don't read a lot of comics. Where can I start? Do I need to read the first Superman? I don't know. And yeah, and I'm going to tell you, yes, you should read Superman in order sequentially. <laughs> start in 19... Was it 38? Yeah. <laughs> you know, start there and keep going. And just keep on going. Yeah, you know, read a couple comics a day. As long as you're buying from Ultimate As long comics. as you're buying from us, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I, you know, I, I say this a lot, but I feel like it's, you know, if I'm in the shop or if there's, an, uh, you know, an Ultimate employee in the shop, like our job is to be your guide, right? Because we know it's overwhelming. We know there's so many comics. There's so many options. And, you know... A lot of times people come in and they don't even know what they want. Yeah. They don't even... Sometimes we get people coming in and they're like, they still make these? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Uh-huh. What'd you think? Why'd you come here? But anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, like, you know, it's like our job to kind of guide you in the right direction. And the goal is to get you hooked on comics. To get you to fall in love with the medium and comic books in general. Like, ideally, hopefully, publishers are bringing people into our stores. We're, we're doing advertising events, promotions to get people into the shop. And then once we're there, you know, it's to find you that book that hooks you on comics. And, and, and you know, not just say, like, oh, I, you know, we get you reading Spider-Man, and you like that book, but, well, something's going to change. The yeah. artist is going to change. The writer's going to change. Something's going to happen. Spider-Man's not going to get... His marriage is going to get all of a sudden undone, and mm -hmm. you're going to be like, what the hell am I reading? Right. right. Uh, and so we want to get you to fall in love with, like, actually, like, the mode of storytelling that is comics so that, you know, you don't just fall off after that one book. Like, you're like, oh, there's more. Yeah. So it's tricky, but, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's my... That's, like, our job, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we're there. We're trying to guide you in the right direction, trying to get you hooked on comics, and we know there's a lot. And there's a lot of stuff that we haven't, I haven't read action comics through, you know, like, yeah. obviously, I, there's just not enough time in the world. Right. Um, because there's so many. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we know it can be scary, but, you know, there's so many good comics. That's what, there's so many comics, and there's so many good comics. Right, exactly. So, so, yeah, trying to get people to find them and find the right book for them, that's, that's kind of the gig. Yeah, and that's one of the major reasons why we wanted to do this podcast. Yeah, because I did some research and I found out that there's a large swath mm -hmm. of people, large amount of people in this world that don't live near an Ultimate Comics. Wow. I know. I was... Not normal. I was astonished because, I mean, in five stores, you right. think that would kind of cover the world, most global. regions. I mean, we're obviously avoiding the Arctic. Mm -hmm. There's not many people there. Right. But five... How many continents are there? <laughs> Enough that there should be an ultimate there comics. Be, so, every continent. You know, so until we get there, <laughs> until we get there, uh -huh. this is kind of like your virtual. Yes. Yeah. You your know, guide. Your guide. To looking into new books, new recommendations, uh, companies that yeah. are sort of forming their yeah. own sort of thing. Mm -hmm. We got the updates on stuff. You got it, yeah. And honestly, I obviously, I like to push the envelope. Mm -hmm. I like to push people's buttons. I'm a pusher. You push people? I push people. <laughs> um, so, so let's start with a hot take. Okay. All right. Well, it's got to oh, be a, a question. It's a question. Okay. It's a question okay. I'm posing. Okay. Are there... You know, we just talked about how confusing yeah. it is. Yeah. Are there too many comics? You think about how many comics come out, come out uh -huh. and we're like, the average customer doesn't know where to start. Yeah. Are there, t and people, there's companies popping up, like Distillery just popped up a couple of months ago. Ghost Machine is kicking off. Uh, are there, are there too many? So you go ahead, take the floor. Um, I think, again, as an average person who would walk into a comic book shop and uh, having not really read a whole lot of comics in my time, I would say there's an overwhelming amount of comics. I think that we need to get into this throughout the episode and maybe find our way to the answer. Right, right. Maybe Kind of like a map. Yeah. Like we're kind of going through. We'll do we're going to do some, like, myth-busting. Yes. I love it. I love it. 
cool. Because you see, this is the dynamic that we're working with is that Sienna has this wealth of knowledge of a lot of stuff in the comic book industry. Wealth. Wealth. And uh, I, I have, since I have started working more alongside you, have already learned a lot. Like just on the job, doing Cosplay live versus shows. versus costume. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> real talk, you uh, you definitely have a wealth of knowledge of this. So I do think that it'll be it will be sort of a we'll develop that answer as we go. You yeah. Know? So we are excited. I mean, so we're dropping this, and it's a pretty big week for new releases this mm. week. Um, and we got to read some review copies uh, because this Wednesday is Ghost Machine Day. Mm -hmm. We kind of talked about them. I mentioned their name before. Yeah. But brand new uh, imprint for Image Comics helmed by Jeff Johns, um, you know, who is just a huge name in comics, huge deal. Uh, his Green Lantern run is what like got me into DC Comics. I started working at Ultimate, and I've always mainly read Marvel indie stuff and just not not really dived into DC, aside from like a bunch of ba classic Batman stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I had to broaden my horizons, and I just started with Jeff Johns' Green Lantern run because that seemed cool. I think mm -hmm. I, I worked my like way backwards. I read Blackest Night, and then I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. Uh, obviously, he's done a lot. He's done a lot in movies and TV sh TV shows. Uh, like the Star Girl show. He was. He's just done a lot in the production side of DC's movies and TV shows too. Uh, and now he has kind of created this uh, new comic company, Ghost mm -hmm. Machine, which is a real murderer's row of talent. You got people like Brian Hitch, Jason Fabok, Gary Frank, just like titans of the industry. Yeah. Have this great track record. And he's like, let's 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 put us all together and just make comics. Um, so this Wednesday they are launching their first three ongoing series. They're doing Geiger, Rook Exodus, and Redcoat. Yeah. And Ultimate is doing a deal where you can get all three of those titles for just five bucks. Wow. Yeah, while well, supplies last, we went big. We're really excited about this. Um, and so I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. So I came in knowing a little bit about Ghost Machine and, you know, I'd been on some retailer calls and stuff and gotten the pitch. What did you think? You read those kind of review copies, mm -hmm. kind of going in blind. Yeah. Did you have a favorite of those three? I did. So I really, really enjoyed the Red Coat comic. That was my favorite too. Yeah. And I, that was the one I was most unsure about because I was just like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. See, I'm a, I'm a history person. I love historical stuff. And so the second I saw Red Coat, I was like, Red Coat? Like Red Coats? Yeah. And then, um... You sort of follow along with this story of this, like, scoundrel <laughs> right. red coat. He's not a good person, and mm -hmm. nor does he pretend to be. Mm -hmm. he, he tells you, like... Up front. Yeah, in the first few Cowards. panels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm a coward, I'm a, like a, you know, cheat, like... Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, you sort of get this, like, historical atmosphere of... The Americans are working with cultists. Like the blood magic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? To become immortal. Uh, As like you do. You do. As you do. <laughs> to be a, to be a founding father forever. Sure. Um, and this this red coat uh, is is sort of eavesdropping and literally drops on the ritual and he instead becomes immortal. immortal. And now now the story is following along his journey of immortality and you like all of the things you think might happen with immortality, like becoming rich. Right. Beco like lamenting at how bored you are with the world because you've seen it all. You right. No, he's the opposite. He's still poor. S still a loser. Still a loser. Still struggling. Still getting slapped around by women. Yeah. Um, just surviving, which is honestly a mood. I mean, honestly, you know... I feel like that would be me with him, <laughs> right? Like yes. I don't know. No, I would feel maybe I would speculate on land and like I. Don't, but I don't know. You Literally, know? My, that's what I thought when I was reading. I was like, my luck. I would right? be this guy. This I would wouldn't be. be I wouldn't be like a, an immortal vampire who's like beautiful, rich, yeah, no living Voltori in a castle, coat, like you know, yeah. special powers and robes. No, -uh. no, I would be running away from people who wanted me to pay for my room that mm -hmm. I haven't paid for. Right. <laughs> I mean. So my, like, I, what I liked about the pitch, so I was on a retailer call with Jeff Johnson and some other folks from Ghost Machine, and his kind of pitch for the book was, you know, we're giving immortality to this kind of crappy guy, mm -hmm. 
and seeing if he can grow. Seeing if he can, like, you're putting, like, the worst guy and you're giving him all the time in the world to become a better person. Yeah. And right now we're, like, a hundred years in and nothing has stuck so far. No, but on, but mood. Like, right. like literally, that every the whole time I'm reading it, I'm like, this is such a mood. Like, will he learn? Will he become a better person? But I think that's what makes the hook interesting. Right. Uh, and, and honestly, it's not like anything that is on the stands right now. Mm-hmm. I mean... You know, I was, that was why I was con- I, not concerned. I was just like, ah, I don't know, this is kind of weird. Like, I don't, red coat, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but there's not really anything on the stands like that right now. Yeah. Which is cool, which makes it stand out. So this is like filling a niche of us kids who loved, what was that show? I was a big fan of the Canadian, like, kids. Liberty like, kids. Liberty kids. Liberty kids. Yeah. Going through history. Yeah. Uh, wishbone. Uh-huh. Literature, uh-huh. but history. And that's not at all what this book is about <laughs> at all. No. There's no uh, Canadian kids. There's no... <laughs> Folks at home, this is not actually, like, a family No, it's not show. a family book, but... But I don't know. But, like, it's just, yeah. Like, we both like this historical fiction and... and but yeah, I mean, it, it it's not it's not boring. It's not history. It's just yeah. it's just this. It has the element of history while giving a a likable character. Because you know sometimes, I feel like when you get those like I'm not a good person characters, they're yeah. not very likable. Because right. like, you guys are trying too hard to make right, right, them right. not likable. Right. But this guy, he has some charm. He has some some Han Solo vibes. Okay. You know? Okay. Like I, I'm. I'm not good, but I'm likable at least. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta. I, I'll shrug, and you'll kind of be like, nah, whatever, you know. <laughs> well, not his lady friend, but you not know, his we'll lady see. friend. We'll see. Oh, or um, the numerous lady friends that slapped yeah. him. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was honestly my favorite too, and I was really surprised. Uh, Brian Hitch killed it on the art, and um, and yeah, I mean, it was it was a really great read. And then, um, you know, we talked about, I mean, I don't really want to spend a ton of time talking about Geiger. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great book. Uh, incredible Gary Frank art. But we've already got, like, a full graphic novel out for him. Uh, so you're probably, we've got some folks who are already familiar with that. Um, but that first issue was a great jumping on point. Gave it kind of like a Western feel. He's kind of like the, the roguish cowboy mm. who, you know, is put on a mission even though he doesn't want it. He gets a sidekick that he doesn't really want. Mm. Very like Indiana Jones and yes. like short round where you're like, ugh. He's like, I don't, you just keep following me. Yeah. And you know. Yep. Uh, but, but yeah, it was, it was a great entry point if you have, you don't have to have read Geiger to before this to jump right in. So, yeah. so I dug that issue. Uh, and then the other, the new one, the, the new, new series, Rook Exodus. Yes. What did you think about that one? I thought it was uh, a really, really interesting story. Um, obviously the, the costume aspect, the design. Right. Yeah. That was, um, Grace, the carry store manager, when we were talking about the books, you know, before we had gotten to read anything. Uh, she was most excited about that one because she's like, oh my God, I can picture like a super sick cosplay out of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. The de- so basically it's, um, to, to sort of summarize, it's post-apocalyptic. They're on a new world that's supposed to be the the answer to the end of our world. Right. Um, but this one is also failing. <laughs> Go humans, I guess. I mean, you know, <laughs> with our track record, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it so, um, you know, this new world kind of falling apart. These people have come to this new planet. They have these helmets that are designed off of a specific animal. Mm-hmm. And the main character, Rook, has a, a crow helmet. Okay. And so he can communicate and control crows. So he just has, like, a murder of crows yeah. surrounding him. But there's other characters. There's... Um, a guy with like a boar helmet and he mm-hmm. has, he controls like wild pigs and boar. Um, there's like a bear guy who controls these giant bears because, you know, the ecosystem is so off in this planet that a lot of yeah, these okay. animals are getting huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, wolves, foxes, there, there's all these different animal helmets that are communicating with these animals. Really neat concept, really cool designs. But my... I feel like the most important question that I have and probably many viewers have is which helmet would you pick? It's a really tough... Okay, so because it's going to take me probably way too long to go through 
which one I would pick. Let's start with you first. I which mean, I would you pick? immediately know I would pick crows because okay. my goal in life is uh, to be like a retire early and be one of those old guys that wanders the beach at like mm. six in the morning with mm -hmm. a metal detector. Mm -hmm. Like I really want to be a metal detector guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, like like. You know, when you're like, you, you find someone's earring, uh -huh. and you know, that's very exciting, like a little piece of trevor treasure, uh -huh. and you just throw it back in the ocean because you're hoping for like a real payout. I want to find like doubloons. Uh -huh. Like, I I want this. This is definitely going to be my passion yeah. project. So, my goal after I, you know, put an ultimate on every continent, as we discussed, right, aside right. from the pole, I'm just ignoring the poles, yeah. to be honest. I'm just ignoring the North and <laughs> well, South. Well, you know, it's, you can't That's put humans there anyway. wide open territory for any other comic shop that, right. that wants to go in there. <laughs> yeah. We would non-compete. Uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. No, I want to retire young. I want to just have a metal detector. So, crows, right. similar to a metal detector, attracted to shiny like objects. Shiny and so I could, like, just, you know, Professor X them and be like, Go yeah. find me some doubloons or right. whatever I'm searching for. Right. And maybe I wouldn't even need the metal detector. Yeah. I could just kind of be have the helmet on the beach. Yeah. Kind of like Myrtle Beach wandering around with like a crow. <laughs> with a crow with helmet. With a crow helmet. The crows are bringing me trinkets. <laughs> oh, taking man. Taking people's like corn dogs and stuff <laughs> off the boardwalk. I love like, it. That's how, that, that's how you guys find food. That, just, like, yeah. Taking... Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so I would be a crow guy. Great. Um... um I, I mean, the aesthetic of the crow outfit. Kind of like a... Fabulous. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's like every goth person's dream, you know, to look like a crow and have a murder of crows following behind them. Um, so you're a poser. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but we don't know. You, you were still going. Maybe you weren't going to pick was, something different. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me, okay, let me we're, cook. We're gonna, let okay, me cook. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I really like the crow. Uh -huh. um, the bear option again giant huge bears barreling 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 through the woods behind you really dope mm -hmm. really cool mm -hmm. um and then the dire wolf is really cool so my question is do you think if i had the bear helmet uh -huh. do you think that that counts for all types of bears so like do you think i could be in san francisco castro district uh-huh and be potentially <laughs> influence <laughs> certain members of the community. Of the... <laughs> no! Well, I don't know. I don't know why that took me so long to catch up with what you are trying to say. Well, I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm instantly trying to break the helmet, so uh -huh. I'm wondering... <laughs> <laughs> New York, I, I mean, I Miami, like, you know, like, maybe this helmet That's comes in handy in certain... <laughs> I think it has to be like the uh, the the bear the the <laughs> no, well you know and when, the oh the bear the TV show would I suddenly become executive producer oh no I'm controlling the bear you're controlling it you're calling and the shots suddenly now. Ao is guest starring on our podcast oh my god but really if I was picking any bear I would want to control pandas they are I mean they're cute they do the, uh, the little tumbles you know I think I could solve a lot of problems I'd be like just. Like, I'd be telepathically communicating with them, telling them to mate. Well, and, and that might... <laughs> that's what solve. happens in the comic. They have... Well, well not that. Not not the... Mm -hmm. Not the mating. I mean, that's a me thing. I'm solving the popula the panda population crisis. That's the flavor you're bringing to the narrative if you come on to it. But yeah, if I have the panda helmet, I right. think... I don't know what they even... They still wouldn't know what to do. You'd be like, they'd be getting the waves, and they would just be like, but... But how? But how? And we're not in the mood. No, uh, but but in the comic, yes, they, they have they do communication do okay. with <laughs> animals. And the communications are failing, so that's mm. the struggle. Um, as soon they're as there's the no more communication, those animals are going to lash out because they're all starving, they're big animals, so they're either going to run away or they're going to attack as soon as that mm. communication fails. So that's sort of the... Uh, living on the edge that these guys are doing. Okay. Yeah. Do you think anything that I mentioned might happen? And <laughs> we don't know. That's we don't know. You have to issue have to two reading. Issue two maybe. They might introduce Sienna as Panda. a character. Pandas. <laughs> Pandas. Uh other <laughs> other bears. Is there uh, is there like what if what if there's like a rejected 
animal helmet. Like, an animal helmet that not many people would really want. Like, uh, that you could choose. Like a goldfish. <laughs> or like, yes. like, something like the most, like the worst animal. The worst animal. It's a the goldfish. deep discount. Like, it's the Ollie's helmet that you get, you know? It's, the it's like a deep discount helmet. And yes. Like, I, it's, it's like the, the game, the X Men Reject game, where you pick like a really bad mutant power, but yeah. for this comic book world, where you just get a really bad helmet. I'm trying to think. What would be, like, the funniest helmet? Uh, an earthworm. You mm. just, like... <laughs> well, earthworm gym. You, do you True. control the rights to that as video game? Did you make some money off of that? <laughs> Again, does that helmet... I'm just having... <laughs> I've got... You've got business in that you're I, thinking listen, about. Uh, I'm always making money moves. They call me a young mogul. <laughs> Comic book mogul. Uh, oh, man. Uh, 30 under 30. There's not many of us, so I'm just on that list by because I'm one of the only comic shop, even part owners that would be there. Oh, um, man. But anyway. 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 We digress. We're excited. We're very excited. I mean. All very good books to check out. Yeah, and, and another one I wanted to point out that comes out this week, Deadpool number one. Exciting. Obviously timing because they're, we got, is it a new movie, I think? Yeah. Yeah, new, yeah Deadpool Wolverine. Uh, uh, maybe. Maybe. Um, but I'm super stoked. Um, the previous writer, Alyssa, her run, their run, incredible. Oh my gosh. Uh, they are also just the nicest human being that Alyssa you've ever met. Alyssa is, so I, so I got to, um, sort of communicate with Alyssa during well, can this I just past. You? They, they are my customer. <laughs> they yeah, are. You they are going. your customer. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to agree with mm-hmm. you that mm-hmm. Alyssa is incredibly nice. When I, uh, interacted with them for this past NC Comic Con, they were one of our guests. Mm-hmm. So nice. I mean, too just nice. Too nice. It makes me uncomfortable because I'm not nice. <laughs> like so Skeletor. I, yeah, I'm just, just not nice. I'm just like I don't. I, I mean, I but but it's it's it. good for them. It works for them. Like I don't it think it would work for, for me. But I <laughs> if I can you, if you it. suddenly started being overly nice, I, mean, I don't know what I would My staff would just riot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, and also their run their run on Deadpool was incredible. Yes. I, I've actually re- <laughs> it's embarrassing that I've read almost every Deadpool run. Uh, I was a junior high kid who read a lot of Deadpool as yeah. you do. Um, so I loved Alyssa's run on Deadpool. Um, so I was really bummed, and so we all were when their run was ending. But uh, Cody Ziegler is taking over as the new writer, okay. and Cody is also a friend. Also, I don't, I feel like we can't get into comparing niceness levels, mm-hmm. but Cody, very nice as well. We had him sign last year for, uh, we did a Miles Morales signing, because uh-huh. he's writing Miles Morales right now, who just celebrated a big birthday, mm-hmm. 200th issue or, or 300th issue, whatever Marvel decided they needed, wanted to make up. But, um, but it's a great issue. Cody's run has been so good on Miles, so I am so stoked to see his take on Deadpool, because yeah. he's actually, it's just a super funny guy. He writes for TV, too. I know he's, uh, he was written for Rick, Rick and Morty. Mm. Uh, he wrote for the, uh, She-Hulk TV show. Oh. He wrote the Daredevil episode, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, Daredevil so, episode was good. So, yeah, I'm really interested to see how that kind of translates. We don't get a lot of info on what this uh, what this run is going to be like, but um, honestly, his Miles run is probably one of the I mean most popular Spider books at our stores. Like everyone loves his run, so I'm stoked to see Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Uh, his take on Deadpool. Yeah. So and then there's another Deadpool. It's not coming out this week, but okay. I did want to put a plug because mm-hmm. I am excited. Uh, since you mentioned the movie Deadpool Wolverine, there's going to be the Deadpool Wolverine uh, comic book. Uh, Deadpool Wolverine World War Three, uh, written by Joe Casey, uh-huh. who uh, I one of those Deadpool runs I read. I think early two thousands, maybe late nineties, and Adam Kubert on art, and God, the cu- the entire Kubert family. I mean, they have a whole school, so you know you're gonna get really good art. Adam Kubert stuff is incredible, um, and so they're doing a, a a comic book too, and I was really excited about that because Ryan Reynolds tweeted about it. Yes, Ryan Reynolds um, approved. Yeah, I mean, it's so crazy that, like, he can just take, like, one second out of his day and get, like, 80,000 likes yeah. on some, like, tweet that promotes a comic book. Yeah. But, like, that that is so, it's so easy to do. Why don't more people do it? Oh, my God. I mean, like, and it, it was it was just, like, it's, it was incredible. I was like, oh, my God. He tweeted about a comic that isn't coming out. And, you know, like, that's just, like, really cool for a comic shop owner to, to, to kind of, 
hit those movie fans in a way mm-hmm. and hopefully get them coming in the door. And this is something that's super similar to Pool Wolverine teaming up. It's going to be similar if, you, if you're if you excited for the movie. Um, and you get great creative team on that. It's yeah. not just like a like a throwaway book. You know, you got Adam Kubert drawing it. So if, like, you're going to get someone hooked on comics, um, what a great opportunity. Absolutely. I mean, I think it makes a huge difference when the actors who are portraying the characters are truly fans. Because, yeah. you know, Ryan obviously did his homework. Oh, He's for been sure. opening up those, cracking open those Deadpool comics to do, you know, source material reading. Yeah. So it's awesome. It's so, It makes such a difference when the actor is a fan of, of the work because then you have moments like that where right. he's going to promote comics that will make a difference to comic book shops and people who read, you know? Yeah. Get more people to read. Get more people to read them. So um, that one's not out this week. That one is still, you can, I think we did already did FOC, um, but you can still bug Ultimate. We went big on it. it. You know, let us know you want a copy. I'm really stoked about the book. Like I said, Kubert, Joe Kelly, sounds right up my alley. Now I will ask, what does, for the viewers at home, obviously, because I know, I'm just kidding, I don't know. What does FOC mean? So, it's an acronym. Okay. And so that means, how much do you want, so an acronym is when you have, like, Uh, letters that stand for other words. (laughs) Yeah, I got that. (laughs) Uh, So, it stands for Final Order Cutoff. Uh, So, that is the last time that we can change our numbers. So, retailers, we get, like, a month to mess around with our numbers, Mm -hmm. uh, how many copies we're going to order of a book, Mm -hmm. and the final order cutoff, that is the last day we can change our numbers. Um, So, you know, that is the day you got to tell us you want a copy of the book, because some stores don't order a lot for shelf, and it depends on the book. I mean, sometimes we don't order a ton for shelf, especially if, like, a series has been going on for a while. We think we know who wants it at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's super important to tell your shop if you want your book you got to get in and let them know before the final order cut off for that book. Absolutely. Uh, and there's a... We're not there yet, though. We're not there yet? <laughs> well, you know. I wanted to talk about, really quick, some uh-huh. of the books that came out this past week. Okay, okay. That we read. And then we can talk a little bit more about final order cut off. But, um, now... I'm going to admit something to you. Okay, please admit Uh, something to me. I haven't told this to anyone. Okay. So I would appreciate it if you didn't, like, you know, spread it out there. Sure. Now I'm a little nervous, but I haven't watched any of X-Men 97 yet. Oh! I know. How could you? I know. And I am... I'm the resident Cyclops fan. I know! I am the leader of the Cyclops fan of Ultimate Comics, and the amount of crap I get uh-huh. from my staff uh-huh. about liking Cyclops. It is... It knows no bounds. Right. And, like, oh, I, what's there... What's not to like? Cool visor. Uh-huh. Cool jackets. Hot babes always. <laughs> like, dude is punching above his weight class all the time. He goes from Jean Grey to Emma Frost? Uh-huh. And with Madeline Pryor in there in the Sprinkle. crazy skimpy goblin outfit? Yeah. And then, you know, back to Jean. The man is a magnet, and, like, <laughs> should not be. He's very boring. <laughs> so I'm just, like, could I, I just, I'm idling. I, I'm just uh, real idolized. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm, like, I punch above my weight class with my girlfriend, so I feel, like, a, kin, a kinship with, uh, with Cyclops. Well, so. and arguably in the series so far. Yeah, now he's awesome. everyone is, like, oh, Cyclops is cool. I'm, like, hmm. The, with the yeah. big, like, uh superhero landing using the visor and uh, that's the only clip i've seen and i'm just saying you guys are fake fans all right <laughs> my boy psych has had it going on for a long time right, right, but right. you know what I'm welcome you welcoming you to the fold welcome <laughs> he's cooler than wolverine mm-hmm. otherwise wolverine would be dating gene just say well, it. you know, obviously there's something just to Scott that Gene continues to stay with him. That's that's true. Cool jackets. <laughs> that's why I wore mine. Um, <laughs> but I also wanted to ask about the show. They play basketball? 
They do? They play uh, basketball. 90s vibe. Very um, 90s, like, white men can't jump, kind of like. <laughs> yes. Uh, Gambit, Gambit wearing a crop top, which. Hot. Some people, I, I don't know, some people didn't like it, and I don't know why, because it's so 90s. That is, like, the most 90s thing. Adam Sandler was running around Adam in a crop Sandler. top yes. in the 90s. Yes. Have you ever watched Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Will Smith, wearing crop tops? Crop tops for days. So 90s. I mean, listen, guys. If you're if you're listening to us and believing what we say, taking it as face value, go out and buy a crop top. Just get a crop top. Just get a crop top. I think uh, even Sylvester Stallone wore crop tops. At Sylvester some point Stallone too. did wear a crop top. Yeah. I listen. Listen, real men. Real men I'm not gonna say that. Men wear crop tops. They okay? can. They can. They can. They can wear crop you tops. You can. You can. Bring it back. Let's bring it back. Uh, uh, no, but the the series I think is. So when I was a kid, I did watch the animated series. Mm -hmm. um, if you quizzed me on it, obviously I won't be able to tell you all of them. Well, that's actually the next segment of the show. <laughs> Get me those cue cards. Are no. you a fake fan? Um, but I do think I, I remember the vibe. I remember the aesthetic. Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. Everybody has like a quip, a one-liner. It's it's a little cheesy, but it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I do think that they transitioned it really well into this. It sort of continues on. Uh, but they're bringing some cool content to it. Yeah. Obviously, you spoke about Madeline Pryor. She, we got Madeline Pryor. We got Baby Cable. Baby Cable causing trouble. Yeah. Moving the blocks around. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. So I mean, uh, and and we're only on episode three. Uh, well, which I, by this time maybe episode four is already I, coming yeah, out. Yeah, I know. I like that they're slow rolling it to kind of yeah. like build the momentum. And what I really like about the show, I, I watched the show as a kid too. And my dad, like every other dude in his like late twenties, early thirties, in the nineties, was like, oh, nineties X Men. <laughs> so he started recollecting it when because of 90s X-Men. Mm -hmm. So I read a lot of those as a kid because they were just in this closet. And my favorite thing about 90s X-Men, and I like Hox Pox, okay? Jonathan Hickman fans, I love it. I love it. But I feel like the vibe that's missing is just kind of like that they're like this like found family kind of hanging out, chilling in their mansion, mm -hmm. playing basketball, mm -hmm. uh, weird incestuous romance plots, you know, because they're all family, but they're also smacking on each other right, and right, like right. stuffing each other uh -huh. on the basketball court. Like that's, I, I love that about the X-Men. I love that just like... Downtime. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite part of superhero comics a lot of the times is like this quiet moments when nothing's mm -hmm. super happening. Mm -hmm. Like that's why, like Spidey is, Spidey is, yeah. is my favorite superhero of all time and that's because I really like Peter Parker and I like the soap opera aspect yeah, yeah. of Peter Parker's the, life. Incorporating slice of life into yes. the superhero quests. Yes. Which makes them feel more relatable. I think we cracked the code. I think we cracked basketball. Basketball. That was, that Hoops. was the code. Hoops. <laughs> Hoops. We be hooping. What's the name of the girl? Just call me Kate and Clark. Caitlin Clark. Because I be what does she do? Threes. <laughs> Like an X-Man. Like an X-Man. Uh, but, the, okay, so the comic. <laughs> yes, anyway. <laughs> anyway, Caitlin, we're, we support you. <laughs> uh, not a sponsor. Um, we have the X-Men 97 comic, comic book, which sort of piggybacks, goes along with the series, if you're if you're watching it, if you're not like Sienna and you are actually watching All right, the I'm going to get to it. Uh, this is going to sort of go along with it, right? Yeah, it's basically like, it's like missed episodes, right? Like, you know, it's total, a, ca a cash grab. But, like, it's, it's a publishing plan that, that Marvel does where, which I love as a comic book retailer, again, trying to get people into comic books. Like, man, they know X-Men 97 is going to be on top of people's minds and that maybe they want something on the shelves that's similar to what people are watching and digging. So someone comes in, uh, to the store because they like the show. There's actually something super similar, and that's a great jumping on point. You don't need to know anything continuity. You don't need to know why are the X Men on an island and why are they all suddenly having sex with each other. I don't. You don't need to know that. Right, right, because right. Because they're they're this is this is not that. This yeah. is like the show. It's a it's like the filler episodes of anime, like um, a little less weird. All the, yeah, less tentacles. Yeah, although you mentioned island and every uh, well, that's listen, like a beach episode. Yeah, that is well. <laughs> um, no, this is actually 
uh, going to be like side quests, you yeah. know? Yeah, and it's um, just fun. Yeah, it, 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 like like you flip through the art and you're like, this looks like the animation, like of the new show. Absolutely, you know, the updated. Yeah, animation. yeah, yeah. It's it definitely looks exactly like it, if not better because it's on paper. You know, artwork can be more detailed when you're not having to also animate a million frames. So yeah. while the animation is fabulous, um, I I would argue that reading it in the comics, you're going to have more detailed, fine line yeah. uh, shades going on. It's really cool. So if you dig the show, and or you're just nostalgic for the 90s like everyone is right now, Absolutely. Um, it's a fun read. It's yeah. definitely a lot, like a lot more similar to like that Jim Lee 90s X-Men book. Mm -hmm. um, and then another one I'm excited about, and I also think kind of has, is, a, is a good uh, book for people who are just kind of walking into the shop. Uh, is Feral number one by Tony Fleeks and Trish Forstner from Image. Um, so a couple of years ago, like right after the pandemic, 2020, 2021 mm -hmm. time. The black hole. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, they did Stray Dogs, which is kind of like a slasher horror movie told from the point of view of these like, like people's dogs. Yeah. And... And they're, they were drawn in this really cool, like, 90s Disney animated style, thinking, like, Lion King, kind of like, mm, what's the one about the little Chippendale Rescue Rangers? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. kind of style art, um, which made, you know, it's great for horror fans looking in, looking for, like, an interesting book. It's great for those, like, Disney fans who are, like, adults now, and they're like... Mm -hmm. I'm cool now, you yeah. know. I want, I want it. I want a little edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is this is kind of their follow up. They did dogs, right? And after an extensive letter writing campaign by myself and Brittany, mm -hmm. the amount of letters we've written, yeah, to get the cat book every hour on the hour. You're welcome. I started sending them litter samples for my cats to make sure that they, it was covered mm -hmm. accurately in the book. After I brushed my cat, I sent them like the fur clumps just to. Um, but yeah, so so you're welcome on this. Uh, but this is uh, the pitch is kind of like it's like Walking Dead, uh, but with like Disney art style told from the point of view of cats. Like maybe Walking Dead meets Homeward Bound. Yeah. There's like a couple cats uh, that are loose in this forest uh, that has kind of been overtaken by this like crazy ultra bad rabies virus mm. so like all the other animals in the forest have this crazy rabies virus which is like the perfect metaphor for like like a walking dead like zombie zombie virus Absolutely. for cats yeah so they are just trying to make it home find their owners and get out of this 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 place where they're being attacked by like rabid raccoons yeah. and things like that and, and trying not to get turned and when i talked to tony fleeks at comics pro which is like the retailer conference you know he talked about how he wanted this to be an ongoing um, and, like, long, like, Walking Dead, like, this is, like, Walking Dead, but with cats, like, zombie apocalypse, like, these guys, like, people get turned, cats die, you know, um, so I'm really excited about this, one, just because the art's so freaking good, yeah, and it's just such a great, like, again, kind of trying to target new readers, you got those kind of people looking for, like, you know, that kind of, like I said, that Chip and Dale, that, like, late 80s, early 90s, like, uh, Disney art, uh, or if you're just a horror fan, it's got just such a great hook and great elevator pitch. Um, and as a cat fan, I'm very excited. About yeah, it. I mean, I, everything you list listed about this is definitely speaking to me as a person who likes cats and horror. And then also we've got on the front cover uh, a little Siamese cat that I own a Siamese cat. So it looks just like my I'm not going to sing the song. No, don't sing the We're song. We're not going to sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, honestly, like it, it definitely speaks to me. I think that it's interesting for people who like all of the things that Sienna listed, for sure. For sure, yeah. And as, you know, as the resident cat, I'm I'm the resident cat fan Nice of, of Ultimate Comics, I think. I think I have the most cats. Yeah, you do. You do. Um, I, I only have one. I used to have three, but I only I've got three. One. I've got nice. three. Nice. Uh, I just took my boy, my son, mm -hmm. Rhubarb, uh, <laughs> named after a comic I, I, I bought, a 1960s comic, uh, Rhubarb the Millionaire Cat. Oh, cute. Mm, yeah, it's about a cat who inherits a baseball team. <laughs> um, as, as happens. Um, I just met, I brought him to meet the, uh, the Easter Bunny. And I'm sure he had a wonderful time. He hated it. <laughs> um, which was weird because I was like, normally he loves rabbits, you right? know? Like, but I think this one was a little too... Human-sized? Big. Nightmarish. Yeah, yeah nightmarish. Um... <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, um, but yeah, uh, the people at 
the the freaking photo place also were not prepared for a cat. It was pet day. So I'm like, oh my god, we're going to be in such a long line. There's going to be like iguanas taking pictures with the freaking bunny. Like, There's going like to be do. dogs, like et, snakes. Uh-huh. I was expecting like hamsters. No. No one was there, in fact. Oh. We were the only ones. We rushed. We were like, oh my god. We like shoved. He's never been outside before, by the way. He used to be a stray. We found him. Uh-huh. Uh, we dragged him. This is the first time, like, aside from the vet, we just were, like, we're running late. We're like, shh. This is the last Monday to take photos with Easter money. We just shove him in the carrier. Like, we got 20 minutes. We rush him out there. Oh, my god! And then <laughs> we get there. And the people are like, they don't see me holding r- rhubarb in uh-huh. his cat here. And they're uh-huh. like, are, are you two taking a photo with the bunny? Like, it was just me and Allison. Like, our idea of good time was to just us two take the photo. Uh-huh. I was like, no, it's our cat. And they're like, cat? Cat? So we pull him out on a leash, and he is meowing, does not want to be there. Just Pupils n- just completely dilated. So bad. And, like, but, they, so they pull out a dog toy, mm. and they squeak to try, and, and it totally works on him, though. <laughs> he's, like, trying to get out. I'm, like, he's in a full harness and leash. I have a bow tie on him. You can't see. <laughs> One, he's fat, so his neck is just, there's no neck. And two, he's, like, squirming around, like, everywhere. And they, they squeak the toy, and it's like, oh, my God. So what the f- what's that? And then, like, the photos, like, look posed. Uh-huh. I mean, he looks like he was, like, docile as heck. Uh, so now, Not like, I gotta panicking. get him a sweet, squeaky toy. Yeah. But anyway, and then, of course, I torture him even more. I drag him upstairs. Oh, no. Uh, well, because Ultimate sponsored the Easter Bunny, so this was for social. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I'll get him interacting with the staff. Staff were not... Well, they were, like, I was also, like, I was telling them to do things about, like, fixing the stores. Like, hey, guys, you know, there's boxes over here. But also, get in the video. I need you in the video with the cat. And they're like, well, which, <laughs> which, one? which one do I do? Which one do I do first? And then I gotta, I gotta say, so, he got a free comic, Donald Duck. Okay. He was excited about that. He I'm does sure like he ducks. Was. Um, we did get him duck food, like, duck kind of treats one time. He enjoyed those. Okay, okay. Um, so he does like to eat duck. So we got a Donald Duck book. And, but he did not win the golden egg. Ah, what was the prize? I was on an ultimate comics gift card and he didn't win it. And ah. I felt like it was kind of rigged. I felt like, like, I felt like they didn't want to make it seem like it was rigged by him winning. So they purposefully. After all of that terror. So all he gets, he gets this little dog figurine. A he dog? Hate, he hates dogs. Oh, personally. no. He loves dogs, hates dogs. Blasphemy. So, Poor anyway. Guy. Anyway. Ruby approved. Ruby approved. I mean, what's your cat's name? Freya. 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 Approved. You yeah. know, did we talk about my other cat's name is Valkyrie? No, I did not know that. Yeah, I've got a one-eyed cat named Dude, Valkyrie. Dude, yeah. I love it. She just went to the vet today and was apparently very bad. But well. we should get your cat to Ultimate. We get her with the, the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Maybe get her to sign a few of these since it's a Siamese. She would not like. She's very vocal, so mm-hmm. I feel like everyone within like a mile radius is going to hear her if I take her into the public. So uh, we get her guess on the pod. Yes, she's got a lot to say. <laughs> she does have a lot to say. She's got a lot to say. Um, um, but, but yeah, yeah, feral. Anyway, back to this comic books. Uh huh. Comic uh, books. And I mean, look at that, Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns pull quote, bringing it back to Ghost Machine. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Jeff Johns says this is as iconic. As Watership Down and Animal Farm. Ooh. So. Good. Dark. T- tear jerkers. Yeah. Gonna be. Um, so, yeah, I'm really stoked about this. Uh, hopefully, you guys come out and support this book so this can be the ongoing, excuse me, the ongoing that it's supposed to be. I'm really stoked on this book. Um, and that is, those are two of the books I was most excited about this past week. There was a, it was a good week for some number ones. Yeah. And then, back to FOC. Uh-huh. Yes. Final order FOC. cutoff. Yeah. Uh. A couple quick books I wanted to point out. Uh, we're getting a new spider Bun book. So Ooh. tell us if you want it. It's written by Stephanie Phillips, which is cool. She's written Harley Quinn, a ton of books from Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's writing a new book over at Distillery. Um, and she is taking on Spider-Gwen. And we're bringing her into the mainline universe, which is cool. Because, you know, obviously you see the, the Spider-Verse movie. They're all in different universe. That's kind of the whole thing. Yeah. But people want to see... Spider Gwen hang out with Miles. Like that's right. the whole thing. That's the whole and thing. It's kinda hard when they're in, in different spots. Yeah. So we're gonna figure out why she's coming into this this unit. Why does she I think she's on Earth sixty five. Mm. Uh don't quote me on that. But why has she left Earth sixty five to come to this mainline universe? To give the people what they want, which and is Miles and Gwen. Miles and Gwen <laughs> shipping. Uh-huh. You know, hanging out. Shipping high fiving. Right. 
high-fiving, uh, specifically high-fiving. I don't know. The uh, whole time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the kids, they watch that animated Spider-Man show, like, Spidey and his amazing friends, and, like, uh-huh. they just, that, that's what, that's what the people want. That's what the people want. So, uh, so I'm excited about that book. I like Stephanie Phillips' stuff. Excited to give that a go. That's on FOC this week, so if you want to check out the new Spider-Gwen, let us know. And then... Space Ghost. Space Ghost. Uh, oh, man. Now, I'm a fan of Coast... I feel like we've got Coast to Coast vibes kind of going on right, right now. We're right, kinda, right, right, right. But we are lacking a, kind of a, a required element. Right. With the little guy. The like, little... Like, 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 like the bug. mantis? The mantis guy? Him. Him. And the other guy. What's the and, other guy's uh, name? And Brack. He's got like a mount... Yeah, he's like a cat man. He had his, like, spin off... His own show. The mm-hmm. Brack show. Uh, he's like a cat man. So are you Brack or am I Brack? Um, or am I like the... What's his no, name? No, I, think I don't you, know. I think you're Space Ghost. I am Space Ghost. Because he he had sort of like the... The charm. The charm. The charisma that you lack. That I lack. But that's why I'm Brack. Because you're I'm Brack. just abrasive. Like just straight Brack up is mean. Right. angry right. and abrasive. I gotta admit like that it's been a while since I've watched Space Ghost Coast. It's, been a, it's uh, been a long time. Like last time was probably college. I watched it when it was on uh, Adult Swim on mm. Cartoon Network, so... Yeah, I feel like we were just watching YouTube clips of Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I don't remember a lot. Of I mean, college. You, you, <laughs> you can imagine what I was, what else I was doing if I was I don't think trolling I YouTube <laughs> video clips of Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Right, right. Something else was happening. Okay. This that's is getting all that of this. That sounds strange. <laughs> I, I mean, I just am saying, like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't all there. I wasn't really paying attention so well. Uh, but Space Ghost, before he was a talk show host, it was like a retro. He had a different job where he was actually <laughs> a, a superhero. superhero. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like I think it was like a Hanna Barbera show, right? Yes. Yeah. Very, vintage, cartoon. vintage. And but he was like just actually out. Doing superhero space, space right. stuff. Right, doing ghosting. Superhero in space. space. <laughs> ghosting in space. So, anyway, new Dynamite series. Dynamite's been doing a bunch of kind of like retro stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they brought back Thundercats, which has actually been really good. It's been nice. uh, written by Declan Shalvey. We just had the artist, uh, Drew Moss, out at the stores for a big signing. Uh, Drew's such a great guy, and that book's been really great so far. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing a lot of Disney books. They did a Stitch book. They awesome. did a Gargoyles comic. Awesome. Um, so now they're bringing back Space Ghosts. Mm. And it's, you know, I think it's going to be, obviously it's not, not going to be talk show. It's not coast to coast. Not coast to coast. Uh, he's going to be doing space. Ghosting. Space ghosting. <laughs> ghosting people in space. So it's going to be more. Me. That's what I do. <laughs> so it's going to be more. That's why you don't. Answer. <laughs> you don't respond. Every time you message Setting me. up this this recording was difficult. <laughs> uh, no, uh, so it's going to be more like the original show. Yeah. But a little, little more grittier, a little meatier. I like it. A little more actual action going yeah, on than, yeah. than Hanna-Barbera, perhaps, was yeah. prepared to portray. Right, right. I like Good it. Good alliteration there. <laughs> Sorry. Prepared to portray. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about that book. That's also on FOC, so definitely let your comic shop know if you want to check out Space Ghost. Um, and hopefully, if that's successful enough, we bring back... They did do a Space Ghost Coast to Coast comic book. Really? DC. You fun. did for a while. Oh, I've, that's I've, fun. I've gotten some of those issues. So hopefully, we can get that going, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's all, I feel like we just talked about a lot of comic books. We so, did. We did talk about a lot of comics. Well, that's my question. We're back to the question. Are there too the many? The existential question, are there too many? I think that there are... What did I say before? I had such an eloquent response, and then well, you were like, wow, we're going to just, we're going to... Wow, you're, you're revealing that this is the second take? <laughs> no, I made it earlier in the podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm revealing that this is the second take. <laughs> you were the one who just <laughs> left everything we're out of the water. Okay, It's a lie, though. It's not a it's second not take. It's not a second take. It's not. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's not an actual... <laughs> No, listen, it's not an actual second take. We were practicing. We were like, we have a skeleton outline of what we want to hit. This isn't all just in our heads, man. So we were practicing a little bit, all right? (laughs) Don't put pressure. I was afraid I was going to fold under pressure like a cheap suit, okay? (laughs) So we had to practice a little bit. All right. (laughs) So So what I was saying. You asked me the question. All right, now go. go. Are there too many comic books? No. No. Okay. All right. That's it. That, Cut. 
The end. Next take. No, I meant earlier in this pod, in this podcast that we were doing. This take, you this, mean? No, this one, the one and only. That's, I'm, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, man. I had said mm-hmm. that it's not that there are a lot of comics, but that's a good thing because there's a lot of variety. There's a, there's a lot of uh, chances to take. A new direction you know like if you come in and you say I like horror you're like oh well do I have a bunch of options for you here mm-hmm. I like Disney well, I've got it I mean I'm, I'm strictly <laughs> going toward feral but you know I like X-Men. X-Men cartoons yeah okay great we've got this for you um, I think it just adds variety to give everybody something that they're interested in you know keep them hooked keep them buying the comics. I like that yeah <laughs> uh, no for me I think I'm gonna take a hot take stance right Ooh, now. Ooh, respectful hot take, lukewarm take. I mean, or is it gonna be you, like you measure the temp? I, mm, <laughs> I've gotten different when I ask how hot I am. Uh-huh. I get different responses, <laughs> so I don't think I'm the best judge. Um, but no, 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 no. Um, no, for me, I think for real, like when I'm talking about like comics and like new, so we're just, we just talked about Ghost Machine. Right. Uh, I mentioned Distillery, the new publishing company with some great creators on their books. Um, Magma Comics. There's a bunch of new, new, new publishers popping up. Um, and for me, I feel like you can tell Mm -hmm. when they are trying to, when their goal is to write a good comic book. Right. When they are a company that is trying to produce a comic book and they're trying to tell a story that, I feel like there are stories that, that you can tell were thought of to be as a comic book. Uh-huh. Like this, Feral is a great example. Yeah. Of like, I mean, this story of like Disney looking cats mm-hmm. being Walking Dead, I don't think that would work in prose. You're missing the art style. That You're missing that like reference that touchstone, mm-hmm. that cultural touchstone that makes it a fun story. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or like, you know, when we're talking about Ghost Machine, you know, Jeff Johns, mm-hmm. you know, I talked earlier about how he's been in TV and, and done movie stuff. The dude doesn't need to be, I assume he doesn't need to be writing comics. Right. Uh, so, and when I was on the call with the, the Ghost Machine folks, you know, they were talking about wanting to make comics wanting to work on their own characters Mm -hmm. make characters that live beyond them right and tell stories uh that they felt like they couldn't do at other publishers okay and you know when i asked you know how 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 many issues jeff's got for like red coat i was like you know how many issues do you think you got on this he's like i don't have an end you know i don't have an end plan i want this to to keep going yeah um but yeah i mean you know and I don't, I forget, you know, if we mentioned, but like, you know, it's part of the economics of publishing now in comics, like, you know, the movie rights and the deals. Right. And I, there are some publishers that just really focus on that, you know, pumping out books to, 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 to sell the rights. Right. And, you know, there are great books that have been turned into shows. Like, you get, like, Umbrella Academy. Uh-huh. Or, like, The Boys. Yep. Like, the, you watch those? Yeah, yeah, I did. Good they shows? Were good. They were good. They yeah. were really good. But I don't think Gerard Way, when he was setting out to make Umbrella Academy, was thinking about a pilot for right. a TV show. Right, right. And so I feel like you can almost tell when creators are trying to just tell a good story in, and and comics is the correct medium to tell the story. So like when yeah. I when I hear from the Ghost Machine guys, that's what I'm getting. That's the vibe. And from when I'm reading the comics, you know, I know Geiger is is maybe being optioned, and I think that would be a cool TV show. It makes sense. It's very visual. Yeah. Radioactive yeah, yeah, yeah. glow would be cool. But from what I get, their goal is to sell comic books and write comic books that for people to enjoy. Not so much worried necessarily. Right. about the other other side of things. And I mean, so this could be my hot take, <laughs> but if you are writing for this explicit purpose of doing movies and TV, be a screenwriter. Right. You know, just go do screenwriting. Right, this is not a cheat, cheat, uh, cheat code or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, I, I think that it makes a huge difference when the creators are creating for comics because the purpose of comics is the creator is drawing out a world visually that then the reader can sort of 
collaborate creativity. You know, like we're using our imagination to build, up to that build off with of them. their imagination. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that when you care about making it into a visual representation on paper as a comic, the story will definitely be better. Yeah. It's not going to be like, oh, this seems like, like you said, a cheat code to a TV show. And again, like I said, I'm not totally, I, like that, that part of the economics of making comics, I don't think you can remove. And you can get great adaptations. Like The Boys, right. I think, has done a lot of fun things that just because it's now on the television medium, like they're making the commercials and stuff, that right. wasn't necessarily a big factor of the comic. But again, Garth Ennis didn't write The Boys. Exactly. It's right? like you, you said, know. They, they weren't writing these stories with the intent of getting that deal. They got the deal because they wrote the story and it was good. And it was great. Yeah. So 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 for me, there's room for for new new publishers, new, new creators putting out new stories, great stories. Um... Because, one, I, I want more great stories to sell. Mm -hmm. And I feel like those are the books that tend to connect with my customers, with my readers, and with me. Yeah. Are the books where, like, you can tell, like, this is what the, the people behind this were thinking about. How do I make this? How do I make a great comic book? Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that succeed in making great comic books. If you're thinking about five steps ahead, you're not going to be making a good comic book. You're you're just making a subpar yeah. <laughs> pitch for yeah. a, for a TV show. Right. Um, like you said, just you know, write a screenplay. Right. Go, or, go be a screenwriter. Go write a novel. Right. You know? Right. 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 And that's like like you know you can like like Farrell like great example of just something that that is just so clearly. Uh, uh, should be a comic. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, I don't care. More publishers, great. If they can follow that model that it seems like Ghost Machine or like Skybound has been doing a great job of. And like, it doesn't need to be creator-owned to be a great comic book. Like mm -hmm. like we're talking about maybe like the Transformers Energon stuff. Um, they're, they're adapting stuff, TV shows, into comics. But they're, they're turning it into something unique like that, that can only be done in comic books. Like if you read that Transformers comic... It's not like the show. It is its own thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So, so I think that's my hot take. I don't think that there are... Maybe, you know, maybe there are too many out there right now. There are some people who I think are, are writing comics not to write comics. Mm -hmm. But I think those books are the ones that maybe, you know, the free market, man. The <laughs> invisible hand of the free market, you know? Right. People respond to... You know, that's not always why books got canceled because there's a lot of great books that 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 don't go on for very long. Yeah. For whatever yeah, yeah. reason, but you know, I think, I think that, um, I think that readers respond to this kind of stuff like good storytelling. Definitely. And so that's what I kind of want us to highlight because there is a lot. There's a lot of stuff coming out, so we're kind of trying to find, and obviously the ones that we've read ahead of time, the ones we talk about for FOC. If we if we haven't read a review copy. You know, we don't know. Yeah, uh, we're just bringing interesting stuff that we won't, might want to might want to give a go. Mm -hmm. um, but the stuff we've read, you know, we want to highlight the books that we think are are worth something. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And we've uh, even just this first go round got a ton of good ones. I feel like yeah, for sure. Um, no, I was really excited about what we talked about. Um, yeah. So yeah. So that's my that's my hot take. Your hot piping take piping, piping hot. hot. Respectful hot take. The tea. <laughs> the tea. As the kids say. Do the kids say that? No. Uh, probably not. Probably not anymore. No. They're, they're saying, you know, something else. Yeah. For real, for real. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> Riz. <laughs> nothing, nothing makes the view count go down faster than oh, me and you try. It's completely not our target audience, too. They're like, what's Gat? <laughs> What is that? What is the Riz? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, that's fine. I learned those words from a New York Times article, so you're in good company. Like, I'm not cool. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, so yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm excited to, to kind of use this podcast to, to talk about those kind of books. And, but this is not the only place people can see us. No, so, you know, like we said uh, at the beginning, this is sort of our chill hangout time. This was chill? <laughs> Well, this was chill. it got a little murky a little bit in the middle. But you're looking at me like it was me that did that. And I don't know. Just a little uh, if if you want to see us uh, in in more unhinged atmosphere, more as I mentioned unhinged. before, yeah. more unhinged, we have the Ultimate Comics live show every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. And what do we sell there? 
comics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, so we we put up like all the new books that are out that week since it's Tuesday night. We have all the ratios, all the new books that are coming out on Wednesdays. Silver, bronze, keys, sets. We just did an awesome Spider-Man special where it was all Spider-Man stuff. Yep. Uh, but it's a great time to hang out. We are hyped up on... What's your? You drink C fours. Yeah, uh, caffeine, sugar, and just sweet tarts. Ropes is what we're usually mainlining. Yeah, just yeah. consuming. And, and just complete delusion. That's what we're. That's what we run on mostly. Yeah, <laughs> but it is a really fun time if you uh, if you haven't definitely check it out, yes. especially because we. We sell you things on that, so we would like you to mm-hmm. do that one. And, and, and again, the viewer rate just went down. They were like, <laughs> I, no, I think some people are like. I think you deserve it. <laughs> They're like, you know Clamoring what? our way to getting the... We need the ultimate yacht. <laughs> we need the ultimate yacht. We're we not do. there yet. We're just not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not even at speedboat level. How are we ever going to get to every all of the continents if we don't have our ultimate I mean, yacht? And again, I'm not trying to get... I don't need one that has like the metal bulkhead that can mm-hmm. go through the icebergs. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking for maybe like a small speedboat right. or like a like the Spy Kids submarine. You know, something small. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> small. Um, oh man. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a ton of fun, and yeah, like we get to interact directly. We read your comments. Yeah. Uh, that's a warning, actually. We read. We do. We read all your comments. So, so if you hurt our feelings, God, be we nice. We'll see it in real time. Our egos are made of glass. Glass. Easily shatterable. Easily shattered. I mean, it is tough out here. <laughs> no, it's it's more. It's definitely more like a live stream hangout, real time. You comment, we will respond mm-hmm. in whatever way that may be. Kind of like you know, like it's like when you, I, I'm I can behave like an NPC if you tell me to do something. Right. <laughs> Thanks for the roses. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's every Tuesday night. Um, and then coming up at Ultimate, we have a signing this weekend. We have mm. Ben Bishop. He is the artist on Last Ronin. They just launched the new sequel, TMNT Last Ronin Re-Evolution. Mm. Uh, so Ben Bishop, the artist, is going to be out here signing. And God, Last Ronin, what a book. It is wild that it is still... How many copies I still sell? It's been in hardcover for a couple of years now. It's still wow. every year top of the bestsellers list. Yeah. Um, so if you're a Turtles fan... Uh, if you're a Last Ronin fan, come check it out. He's going to be signing at our Cary, our Crabtree, and our Fort Liberty store uh, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and he's giving away three free signatures for every wow. fan. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. And that includes CGC Witness ones. We're going to have a Witness at our Cary signing. Wow. Uh, so you can get those Witnessed if you want to encase them in plastic and keep them all fresh. There you like uh, you do. And... You're getting ready. Uh, it's perfect prep time for NC Comic Con, right? You're yes. Turtle, we turtling are, it out? We are turtling it out at NC Comic What's that Con. Mean? That means we are going to have co-creator of the Turtles, Kevin Eastman. What? Celebrating 40 years of Turtles, of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cowabunga. Radical. Pizza for everyone. Only if you buy it for yourself. We though. are not. We're not. We are not providing pizza. pizza at the signing either. Uh, <laughs> just not it. It's just too expensive. Bring your bring your last Ronin comic after get this weekend. Get them double signed. You can get them signed by Ben this weekend and then bring them in November. In November 9th and tenth in downtown Durham, North Carolina. Uh, bring your last Ronin. Bring your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles merch. Bring everything. Get it. Signed. Bring a slice of pizza. He'll sign it. He'll sign it. I mean, can I'm, you slap that? I would try. If he signs, we're gonna it. check. Yeah, we'll check. He can sign the crust. What if he, what if he <laughs> rearranged pieces of pepperoni to write his be or at least to be a K? Oh, I would like a full signature. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, if I'm shelling out any money to get this slab, that's true. That's true. If you're getting it, just slabs, the K, anyone could do the K. <laughs> anyway, uh, that that's some exciting stuff that's coming up for us. Um, and, but maybe, and also, you know. You might, maybe you're just listening to us right now. I, again, back to the live show. Right, right, right. You might be interested, you might be like wondering to yourself, like, what does Sienna look? S- specifically Sienna. What does their hair look like right now? Are they, are they, <laughs> are they on the right side? Are they on their good side? Are they taking the right angle for themselves? I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> you can see us on the live show, which is a real, plus or minus, depending on which, who you're looking at. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, every Tuesday night, uh, and, uh, but if you just want to listen to us, that's cool too. Yeah, that's cool too. That's fine. Um. We've got good voices, I think. But, but also, you can watch this podcast on YouTube. Yep. Uh, on our Ultimate Comics YouTube channel. Oh, hold on. 
Where should they watch the live show? They should watch the live show on Facebook, on Ultimate the- Comics <laughs> live show yes it's ultimate comics live show on facebook or you can watch it on youtube here we stream both places so you can make claims and watch us and hang out with us yeah. both spots yeah and then yeah you can listen to this wherever you're listening mm-hmm. uh bedroom kitchen i don't know car. where you're i don't even well, know where you're going that's where they are listening <laughs> right right but right, yeah right. you can listen to this on whatever platforms we have submarine on. spy kid submarine spy kid submarine ulta, um. ulta yacht <laughs> Um, but it, uh, and and also uh, we have an email set up. Right. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the first things I did when we were talking about making this podcast, you know, Zach was like, "Well, we need to get equipment." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not there yet." Yeah. Uh, first thing I did, we needed to figure out how to receive fan mail because I knew it was going to be coming in by the truckload. Uh huh. Virtually, of course. So I developed a plan. There's an email podcast at ultimatecomics.com we'll put it in the description it's just podcast at ultimatecomics.com mm-hmm. so you can send us uh fan mail mm-hmm. um now i feel like Brittany gets it's been tricky because i was originally a solo host of the live show and now i've had to share the spotlight with Brittany. Uh-huh. and honestly she's taken a lot of the spotlight <laughs> too much <laughs> so if you are sending fan mail just in order of operations who you should be sending that to me right uh, our producer, Zach. Yes. This could not be happening without Zach. Absolutely. And then Brittany is kind of like the afterthought. Way, way down. Way down. Way down. Yeah. Like, you could, if you wanted to throw someone else, Garfield, <laughs> he could be up there, too. <laughs> the Garfield figurine that will not read it. The inanimate. Uh, I, will, I will read it to this little guy. <laughs> uh, um, but, yeah, you can you can send us, you can send Sienna and Zach fan mail. And I guess Brittany. And me, maybe. Uh, you can send us recommendations. What you want us to talk about. What you want us to talk about. Topical topics. Topical topics. If you're watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to know when our next videos come up, and chime off in the comments as well about stuff that you want us to go over. Any sort of uh, comics, you're reading. comics you're reading, any topics about the industry that we could sort of go into and talk about. And if you want us to get more into kind of like animal helmets, <laughs> Right. We can go over that in the second episode. We can. We can. Uh, But yeah, uh, hopefully we see you on the live show. And if not, we will be back here next week. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming to hang out with us. And we will see you next week.